There are two broad reasons why open science is beneficial. So one is a very kind of um, theoretical or abstract reason, which is that it's beneficial for its own sake, that it's just a core feature of science. What it is to do science is to make the basis of your claims available for others to evaluate. It's what distinguishes science from pseudoscience or from other ways of knowing. It was um, fundamental in the, the Royal Society of Science, which is the oldest still existing scientific society. Their motto is take no one's word. Um, so one argument is just that it is what it is to do science is to, to be open and to do open science. Another argument is that it has a lot of practical value. So things like leveling the playing field, making it so that everybody operates by the same rules, everybody is trying to do to share their knowledge with everyone else. Um, so open science makes it a more level playing field, makes it so that it's easier for people to collaborate and to see others work and so on problem that open science helps to solve is to make it easier for more people to get involved in science. So even if you don't have a lot of resources at your own institution, there are ways with open science to get involved, to be able to analyze other people's data, do meta-analyses or reviews, um, collaborate across institutions. All of these things kind of make it so that more people and more voices and more perspectives can be involved in science. Another problem that open science helps to solve is the issue of scientific self-correction. We all talk about how science is self-correcting, but that's not automatically the case. The science isn't magically self-correcting. We have to actually correct it. And open science helps uh, make that process smoother and faster by, again, providing the basis for scientific claims so that people can go and re-examine it. And when we learn something new about how data should be analyzed or interpreted, we can go back and, and and reinterpret things that were already done in the past. The problems are common across pretty much all sciences. Um, different sciences have different ways to address those problems and are kind of at different places in, on the open science spectrum. From what I've seen, every discipline that has examined their practices and their openness and so on has found some gaps and some problems that open science can help address. So. I haven't seen anything that's specific to psychology. I think that we, we've been very involved in helping to make science more open. We're at the forefront of that, but not because we have any bigger problems or more problems. I think it's a coincidence or it's a, a reflection of our commitment to improving methods um, that we are at the forefront, and not because we have more problems. One argument against being more open in science is that doing science in a more open way is often more time consuming. And so it slows people down. They might get less done um, in a given period of time if they have to stop and document things along the way. Mm -hmm. um, I would argue that actually in the long run, it's, it's more efficient, that if you document things along the way, then later you can build on it uh, and skip a lot of steps, not have to reinvent the wheel every time. It helps other teams be more efficient if they want to extend your work and so on. So I think in a, in a short-term kind of way, which obviously we have to, to consider that perspective because you know graduate students only have a fixed amount of time to do some research, produce, show, show that they're good at it. So we do have to take into account the short-term perspective as well, but from a long-term perspective, I do think it makes science more efficient. So one obstacle to open science is this kind of short time frame that we have to do things in. We often have to show evidence of productivity within a year or two between our you know, reviews and, and our jobs or between um, going, up for, going for a job or going up for tenure. So we have these kind of short-term horizons that we have to meet certain deadlines. And that is makes open science harder because if we do... Uh, open science and each project might take longer. We accumulate more knowledge, I think, and uh, so the accumulation of knowledge is faster when science is more open, but for any individual scientist, their productivity might be slower. Um, so we need to think about how we can uh, change the incentive structure so that those two things aren't at odds. And more generally, I think another obstacle to open science is that a lot of the incentive structure in science rewards personal achievements, and that kind of goes against open science and so sometimes. So if I'm uh, if I'm rewarded for promoting my own ideas and my own theories and being right and so on, then it might not seem to my advantage to make my data publicly available, let others scrutinize it, encourage others to be skeptical and critical. So that's another reason why we need to change the incentive structure. We need to make it so that scientists can go into science for the common good and not for personal gain and still have a successful career and, and, and do a good job. And right now I think there is a tension between what it takes to be successful in science to keep your job and what's best for science. One common misconception about scientists is that we're somehow superhuman and not susceptible to biases. And so I think that what I would most want to convince people about is that scientists are human. We we don't always remember what our intentions were or what we did or why we did it. And so I think open science is really important because we need to put safeguards in place to protect people from themselves 
and to remember that scientists are human and will make mistakes and will misremember things or be motivated to see things a certain way. So open science is a safeguard against that to keep science up to a higher standard, not because people or scientists are bad people, just because they're human.